Today we're going to talk about two topics. The first topic is going to be the area of a triangle. Well, you've studied area of a triangle before, and that was one-half base times height. Well, one-half base times height only works if you know the height of a triangle. Like if you take a look at this triangle right here, and we want to know the area of it, we couldn't figure it out unless we dropped a perpendicular down to the base, and we figured out the length of that. But there's another formula that you can use if you don't know the height of the triangle, and that happens if you know the measure of two sides of the triangle and the included angle. So what that means is if you have two sides and the included angle, that is like when you were um, in geometry class, um, if you know side, angle, side of a triangle, the two sides and the included angle. If you know that, then you can figure out or you can calculate the area of a triangle. They call the area of a triangle K. I don't know why, but they just use the letter K for the area. Usually you, we use a capital A, but for some reason K is used this year. So the formula for the area of a triangle is 1 half times A times B, which are the two sides, and then times the sine of the included angle. And this formula is given to you on the reference sheet. So if you take a look at our reference sheet that we use, the area of the triangle formula is the very first one you see. So you don't have to memorize this formula. You just have to be able to use it. And it's pretty simple to use, especially since you can have a calculator at any time. So down here I told you that you've learned about the area of a triangle one-half times base, base, time, base times height. But sometimes you just don't know the height. So if you know side angle side, then here's your angle or your, here's your area formula. And we'll just go through a couple of examples to see how simple this could be. So here's your first um, triangle. They don't, they don't label the sides for you, so you have to do that yourself. Opposite angle A is side A. Opposite angle B is side B. And opposite angle C is side C. So you can see right here, you know, side, angle, side of this triangle. So if you want to find the area, the area they call K is equal to 1 half times the two sides, A times B, times the sine of the angle in between, just like from the area formula. Now these don't have to be those same letters. If you knew side C and side B and angle A, then this formula would turn into 1 half B C sine of capital A. Or if you knew A and C and angle B, this formula would turn into 1 half A times C times the sine of B. It just depends on what you know. So you can just say K is equal to 1 half times 30 times 24 times the sine of 40 degrees. And just put it in your calculator into the nearest tenth we want. So Make sure your mode is in degree mode. Oh, mine's in radians mode. So make sure you switch it to degrees mode or else it's not going to give you the right answer. So 1 half times 30 times 24 times a sine of 40 degrees. And that's 231.4. So 231.4 to the nearest square meter. So that's pretty easy. Example two, here's another isosceles triangle question like what we had be on yesterday's video. So we're going to draw our isosceles triangle. And the legs have a length of 12. And the base angles are 32 degrees each. And find the area of a triangle. Well, we can't find the area unless we know side, angle, side. And they haven't given us this information, so you have to find this one, find this angle. And remember, it's just 180 degrees, whoops, 180 degrees minus those two added up, 32 plus 32, which is 64. So this angle, let's see, we haven't called it anything. Let's call it A, B, 
C. So this is little b, this is little a, and this is angle C up here. So angle C is equal to 180 minus 64, which is 116 degrees. So the area is equal to 1 half times 12 times 12 times the sine of the angle in the middle of them, 116. So 1 half times 12 times 12 times the sine of 116 is 64.7. 1317133 and it wants it to the nearest tenth of a square inch so that's 64 approximately 64.7 square inches so there's our answer and then the last question which is the exact area when you see exact usually that means it's going to be a radical and you can see from the multiple choices that it is going to be a radical the exact area of an equilateral triangle. Well, we have to know what equilateral means. And equilateral means all sides are equal and all angles are equal. So equilateral triangle, we will draw that. And these are all 60 degrees in an equilateral. And each side has a length of 10 inches, so we can mark them all as 10 inches. And we can call these A, B, and C if you want. And they're all the same. A equals B equals C. So the area, K, is equal to 1 half times 10 times 10 times the sine of 60 degrees. 1 half times 10 times 10 times 10 is 100. And 1 half times 100 is 50. And then the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. So, so we have 50, which is this part, times the sine of 60 degrees, which is the square root of 3 over 2. Well, this 50 is 50 over 1. And 50 on the top, 2 on the bottom, reduces down to 25 over 1. So we have 25 times the square root of 3, which is option 4. So that's it about area. It's really not very complicated. Oh no, that's not it about area. We've got a parallelogram over here. So in example 4, the adjacent side of the parallelogram ABCD, so let's mark it ABCD. Make sure you mark it in either counterclockwise or clockwise direction. Measure 12 and 15. This looks like the smallest. This looks like the largest. And the measure of one angle is 135. 135 is obtuse, greater than 90. So I'm going to mark this as 135 degrees. Find the exact value of the area of the entire parallelogram. Well, what we have is a parallelogram that can be split in half like that. So we have two congruent triangles. This triangle is exactly the same size as this triangle. So what we can do is mark this side over here as a 12 and we can find the area of this triangle and then double it and we have the whole parallelogram. So double the area of triangle ADC to get the area of the parallelogram. All right, so let's uh, mark this down here. So I think I'll mark this triangle ADC in red so we know exactly what we're talking about. Here's triangle ADC. And so we've got, this is little d. Across from side C is little c, and across from angle A is little a. So the area of this is equal to 1 half times side times side, which is A times C times the sine of the angle in between, which is angle D. Just remember those three letters all have to be different when you're trying talking about this triangle. So this area is equal to, this is the triangle area. So the triangle area is 1 half 
times 12 times 15 times the sine of 135 degrees. And then if we want to know the parallelograms area, we just double that number. So let's figure that out. 1 half times 12 times 15 times the sine of 135. And so the area of the triangle is 63.63961031. And then if you double that, you get 127.279. So I'll put the parallelograms area is equal to 2 times that answer above which is 127.2792206 and they want oh find the exact value oh sine of 135 sorry about that that is not an exact value I made a mistake here exact value means a radical so the sine of 135 is the reference angle is equal to 45 degrees so the sine of 135 is the same thing as the sine of 45 degrees. So it's 1 half times 12 times 15 times the sine of 45 degrees. So 1 half times 12 times 15, 1 half times 12 times 15 is 90. So this becomes 90. The sine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. And then if we um, reduce this down, we get 45 square root of 2. That is the area of the triangle. Now the area of the parallelogram is double that. So we'll put a little triangle there. So the parallelogram area is 2 times 45 square root of 2 which is equal to 90 square root of 2. So sorry about that little slip up there. I didn't even see the exact value. All right, next one. In triangle ABC, I guess I'll draw it. Here's little a, here's little c, here's little b. a is 20, b is 25, and the sine of C is 3 fifths. Sometimes they don't tell us what the angle is, they tell us what the sine of C is. So we don't even have to figure out angle C. So don't calculate that. Because the area formula is 1 half times A times B times the sine of C, which they give us as 3 fifths. So this area is equal to 1 half times A, which is 20, times B, which is 25, times the sine of C. Not the sine of 3 fifths, but the sine of C is replaced with 3 fifths. Be careful. Some people like to put the sine of 3 fifths in there, but that's not right because that's not angle C. So 1 half times 20 times 25 times 3 fifths will give us 150 square units. So that's it for that problem. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is something called the law of sines. Yesterday we learned about the law of cosines. Well there's another formula for the law of sines. It's actually a little bit easier and, and um, faster to use than the law of cosines. Now the law of sines also is on the formula sheet right down here. So if you take a look at your reference sheet, you can see here's the law of sines and here's the law of sines. I just rewrote it again and it's on the reference sheet. Now when you use the law of sines, you're only going to use two of the three of the, these parts. So if you know a little a, big A, and little b, and you're going to be asked to find big B perhaps, you're only going to be using two. You don't use all three. So you're going to set up a you're going to set it up an equation that looks like this. Or maybe you're given information that you'll be using this. Or maybe you'll use A over the sine of A equals C over the sine of C. What I'm saying is you're only going to be using two out of the three of those parts. 
or maybe you're even going to be given RST, so you'd have R over the sine of R equals S over the sine of S. When applying the law of sines, we set up a pr proportion. A proportion means two fractions equal to each other, involving two angles of a triangle and the sides opposite those angles. So what this means is, if we have this triangle down here, ABC, and they tell us BC is equal to 16, well here's BC, which is letter A. And they tell us angle A is 80, they tell us angle B is 32. We could calculate this, they don't give us this information, but we could calculate that because they all add up to 180 degrees. We want to find AC. Well, what's AC? AC is little letter B. So we're so solving for B to the nearest tenth. And then we're going to find the area. So what we have is sometimes it's nice if you set up a little chart which has the angles of a triangle and the sides of the triangle. And then we can fill in what's given to us. And then we can set up a law of signs easier if we set up this chart like this. So what we're given is A is 80 degrees. We're given B is 32 degrees. And we're given C is 68, or we calculated C is 68. And then we're given little a is 16. And we don't know what little b is, and that's what we're asked for. So I'll just put a question mark there so we can calculate that. Okay. So what this says is we're going to use these we're going to use this part of this chart to set up our, our law of signs. with A and B information. So it says A over the sine of big A is equal to B over the sine of big B. Little a is 16, big A is 80. Little b we don't know, that's what we're asked for, and big B is 32. So when we set up this proportion, we have to cross multiply. And when you cross multiply, it says, just says B times the sine of 80, so that says B sine of 80 is equal to 16 times the sine of 32. That's when you cross multiply. And then to solve this for B, you're going to divide both sides by the sine of 80. So B is equal to 16 times the sine of 32 divided by the sine of 80. And I think I'll just set up a fraction that says 16 sine of 32 divided by the sine of 80. And if you set up a fraction button on your calculator, you don't really have to close off those parentheses if you don't want to. So there is our um, AC to the nearest tenth. There's little b, 8.609. 8.609505969. So B is approximately equal to the to the nearest tenth, 8.6. And that's it for the law of signs example, 8.6. In the next problem, we have triangle DEF, so we'll draw DEF. Angle D is 47 degrees, angle E is 84 degrees, and little d across from big D is 17.3, and we want to find E. So we want to find that. So if we set up our little chart, which kind of helps us become organized, we have D, E, and F. Actually, what did I put first? I put the angles first, so let me put the angles first. Capital D, capital E. And capital F, little d, little e, little f. So capital D is 47 degrees, capital E is 84 degrees. I'm not even going to calculate F because it doesn't come into play in this problem. Little d is 17.3, and we don't know what E is, so I'll put a question mark here. 
And so when we use this part of the chart for the law of sines, it says D over the sine of D is equal to E over the sine of E. Filling in the numbers, 17.3 over the sine of 47 degrees is equal to, we don't know, over the sine of 84 degrees. Cross multiply, and we get E times the sine of 47 degrees is equal to 17.3 times the sine of 84 degrees. And if you divide both sides by the sine of 47 degrees, you get E, which is setting up our fraction button, 17.3 sine of 84 divided by the sine of 47. So E is equal to 23.5251818. And to the nearest tenth, we've got 23.5 as the side E. All right. And I think I'm going to have you do example three on your own. And I'm going to go through example four because we're getting a little low on time. So, or high on time. So we have a DEF, or we'll do, we'll do example three in class tomorrow. So DEF, D is 81, little d is 10, little e is 5, and we want to find angle E to the nearest minute. So we don't know what angle E is. So if we want to set up our chart with the DEF information and little d, little e, little f information, big D is 81 degrees, little d is 10, whoops, not degrees, just 10, and little e is 5. And we don't know what big E is, that's what they want. So if we set up the law of sines with this information, we have D over the sine of D is equal to E over the sine of E. D is 10. Sine of D is the sine of 81. Little e is 5. And the sine of E is what we don't know. So when we cross multiply, we have 5 times the sine of 81 is equal to 10 times the sine of E. And this time we're going to divide both sides by 10 so we know what the sine of E is. So I'll do 5 sine of 81 divided by 10, which is 0 0.49384441703 is equal to the sine of E. Well, that's not angle E. That's the sine of E. So we have to do second sine of that number to get angle E, right, on our calculator, because that's the sine of E. So second sine of that angle is 29.59. 3 da, 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 is equal to angle E. But we want it to the nearest minute, so all I have to do is second angle, option 4, DMS that. This is the seconds, 36 seconds rounds this up to 36 minutes. So this turns out to be 29 degrees, 35 minutes, and 36.8 seconds. And that is rounding because it's more than 30 seconds rounds up. So the answer is 29 degrees and 36 minutes because this seconds is more than 30 seconds. So there's our answer. And we are all done with this part of the lesson. Have a good day. See you tomorrow.